All right, good morning, everybody. This is Carolyn Moulton at DFC Consultants, uh, Stone Ridge Company. And we also have on the line with us, Sabrina Zamera. She's in our marketing team. And then today's webinar, we're happy to introduce to you Matt Adamovich, who is a co-developer of Full Circle Budget. He will lead you through a short PowerPoint and then dive right into the full demo of the product. And for the last 20 years, Matt's company, T3, has specialized in Dynamics ERP, CRM systems, and develops the full budget or the full circle budget. So just some housekeeping things to call out. We are being recorded. And if you have any questions, we've got the chat window for you to use on the screen there. And Sabrina is going to be monitoring that and letting Matt know if there are any questions. And periodically, he'll open it up as time permits for questions. So with that, we're going to go ahead and introduce Matt. You can have the floor. All right, great. Thank you. Again, welcome, everyone. Um, we appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us today, where hopefully we will present for you some options regarding uh, Excel budgeting and hopefully you'll see the value of full circle budget to perk up your Excel budgets. You can think of us as your Excel budgeting barista, let's call it. Uh, moving forward, we all know how popular uh, Excel is, especially in finance and when dealing with budgets. Uh, depending on which survey you review, upwards of 85% of organizations are using Excel in some capacity in the budgeting process. Uh, we all know why we like using Excel. Uh, it's very flexible, limitless formatting. You have robust formulas, calculation options. All of that leads to easy modeling and it's fairly easy to use. With all the good Excel brings to the table, there's obviously some common challenges. Uh, since Excel is a file-based system, you lack a central database generally. Uh, very limited control on data integrity, lack of an audit trail, and in a lot of cases, no data validation. In the Dynamics GP world, uh, the following will be some frequent pain points that we find customers encounter during their process. They're manually formatting their budget entry templates in Excel. They link a bunch of workbooks together to kind of create a budget system. They copy and paste the data once it's approved and import it to Dynamics GP. And then finally, they spend hours reconciling what was in that import file to what is in GP now. So hopefully one or two or all of those resonate with you guys. And if so, you're in the right place. The key question we have for you today is what if there was a solution that leveraged the best of Excel for budgeting? and minimize those challenges. Well, since we're here to present full circle budget, that will be the answer for today's presentation. Excel or full circle budget, as you can see on screen, is an Excel add-in. So it's gonna sit in Excel, not in Dynamics GP. Among the many features that full circle budget brings to the table to help with your Excel-based budgeting, two primary functions come to mind formatting the Excel workbooks for budget entry, and we'll walk through these scenarios in a demo, in multiple demos actually. And finally, saving the budget data directly back to Microsoft Dynamics from the original formatted workbooks. That's a key one, and that's usually the one that brings, brings this home for most users. Um, full Circle Budget has three Dynamics accounting system integrations, GP, SL, and NAV. I believe all of you on the call today are GP related. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I'm gonna bring up our work smarter, not harder graphic, where you can see from left to right, the good, better, best solution for those GP users and what solution you should prefer to use. You can check this out in the resource library of our website. Customer profile, we have one customer case study we're gonna to review today. Uh, Costa Del Mar is a sunglass manufacturer. I'm sure many of you have heard of their sunglasses, maybe even own a few pair. Uh, they came to us looking for a budget solution that worked in Excel with their current budget workbooks. So the key there is 
They wanted a system that worked in Excel with their current workbooks. They didn't want to have to reinvent the wheel, start over from scratch. The problem was they had 26 different department workbooks they were entering budgets into. And after the process was complete, again, this is after the entire process, it took them a week to get all the data from those individual workbooks into a format, imported to GP and reconciled. That's quite a bit of time just to devote to getting the data from Excel back into your Dynamics accounting system. Well, the good news is after implementing full circle budget, they now update their fiscal budgets and forecasts from all those departments in about 15 minutes. So they took that one week process, painstaking process, I might add, down to 15 minutes. Very cool improvement for them. Some of the features we'll walk through when we do the demo and things to keep in mind as we go through this, flexibility. Again, you're in Excel, so the format of the workbooks are yours. Whatever you want to format or format the workbooks in, however you want them set up, that's up to you. Full circle budget can be adapted to those formats. We have a couple options with saving the budget data. You can be in real time mode, which means the end users who are actually entering the data have full circle installed in their Excel and they're saving budget data directly back to your dynamic system during the process. Or they can be in batch mode, which means they enter the data in Excel only, send it to you in the accounting department or the budget manager or save to a central folder on the network, and somebody processes those workbooks through batch mode option. Support for multiple budget worksheets in the same, um, uh, same worksheet, meaning nowadays we get a lot of requests. I'm doing a year end forecast and I'm doing next year's budget. I'm doing a three year forecast. How do I do that? Imagine with full circle budget, you'd have to copy and paste and import multiple budgets with full circle budget. You map that up, you simply save, and each of the budget IDs are updated with that respective budget data automatically. And finally, the audit log or audit trail. So we track all changes and errors. Yes, there might be some errors in those workbooks. We track all of that in the audit log. So you'll know who saved what data from what workbook, what worksheet, what account was updated, what budget ID, et cetera. Everything's tracked. Another feature that goes along with the audit trail is come something called workbook tracking. Workbook tracking is, think of it as Excel backups. So we take a copy of each workbook during the save process and store it offline for easy access after the fact. From a formatting perspective, I mentioned this is one of the key features. Imagine if you would, starting in Management Reporter with your budget templates, exporting those to Excel, and now you have to go through that manual format process of color coding cells, locking the workbooks down, not with full circle budget. The formatting options include color coding those cells for budget entry, password protecting the worksheet and locking out all the non-budget cells, specifying page layout for printing and freeze frame, so kind of cleaning up the worksheet the way you want it presented to the end user, and also creating some formulas or variance calculations uh, for those who are very familiar with exporting to Excel from MR, you lose your column formulas. So with full circle budget, you can easily insert those back into your spreadsheets for the budget process templates. This slide gives you a sample scenario of how you would use full circle budget with Management Reporter. So in the lower corner of my slide here, I've actually got my Dynamics GP company. I've got my Management Reporter report that I've generated. And based on the format of that, I'm going to go ahead and export that to Excel. Full Circle Budget will recognize if that's a budget template, automatically format it for me so it's ready to go for my end user. My end user now opens that workbook. They enter their budget data. And when they save, the data goes right back through Full Circle Budget and into the Dynamics GP company that it's been defined for. So to see that one more time, I generate my MR report. I export to Excel, full circle formats that, staff can now enter data, 
when they save, the information flows directly back into my Dynamics GP company. Addition, so we have two versions of Full Circle currently, a basic and an enterprise. The basic version, as you can see on the grid, supports three users, and it's a one-time purchase of $2,000 plus 20% annual maintenance. The enterprise license of Full Circle includes an unlimited number of users, and it also has a feature called detail line item budgeting or budget transactions. It's a little bit more detail oriented, and that comes at a cost of $4,000 with a 20% annual maintenance. A typical implementation is anywhere from six to eight hours. So again, based on the cost of the software in say 1,000 to 1,500 for services, it's a real easy, straightforward, cost-effective solution, something you probably can't find on the market today. A small sampling of some of the clients utilizing Full Circle Budget. We have anybody from Turner Enterprises, Children's Hospital Association, U.S. Swimming, to Volunteers of America, Goodwill Industries, et cetera. So again, a bunch of good names out there. And we are at the end of our PowerPoint. So as I transition over to my demo, I'm just gonna ask the moderators if there's any questions at this point. And if not, we will continue on. Any questions? I just there? have one one question for you here. Um, when, after you process this, does the budget data get saved to the Dynamics company and GP, or is it only saved to like the full circle budget project or product? Good question. Yep. Good question. So full circle budget will save the budget data through the full circle budget database and into the Dynamics GP company or companies as the definition is defined. So the data is going straight back to the Dynamics company without having to have a secondary step later on. So you are saving data directly into that budget uh, for that workbook. Okay. Great, I don't see any other questions coming in yet, but if anybody has any, please feel the, feel free to put those in the chat window and I will pass them along. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right, so on screen you should see um, what is very familiar to most of you, I would assume, is the ever famous Excel budget template using the Excel budget wizard for GP. So again, you'd have to format your workbook to have your account numbers going down the left with the period and the amounts going across the page and import that and hopefully that would reconcile in GP to these numbers. So with full circle budget, you can forget that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. So again, full circle budget is an Excel add-in. So you can see here as an admin user, I have access to all this functionality. An end user who can enter budget data only and save would only see the process workbook button in their Excel. Full circle budget, again, will work off of any format. So the way we do it is we map out where your account numbers are on your page. So on the left-hand side, you can see I highlighted my segments of my chart of accounts. You'll notice here that I don't have to have the fully qualified account in a cell based on the amount. I can actually have the segments individually listed on this spreadsheet. I also need to identify what budget ID I'm gonna store this budget data to, where the budget data exists, if it's a singular annual amount or if it's a monthly amount, et cetera. And you'll also notice that I have a comment column here. Full Circle Budget actually stores the comments directly back to the Full Circle Budget database as well. So you're not stuck with just having comments in your Excel files, it actually stores that data offline. So to start out, since I mentioned formatting the workbooks on the front end, I'm gonna start out in Management Reporter. I've already generated a few reports here. I have two different templates I've generated here to the browser view of, full, of Management Reporter. So two different templates. I'll start out with this one here first. To give you a quick orientation to this, I'm gonna be working with my projection column and my budget column. Again, this data that's in these columns was previously entered and stored. I've got a reporting tree that I'm working with in my accounting system. And what I'm gonna do is export this. So I hit download, I'm exporting this to Excel. 
I'll be prompted here to save it in a second. So I'm going to save this file to a location where I know it exists. I'm going to replace the existing file and I'm going to go open that file up. You'll notice when I open it up and enable the editing of this file, this window pops up process workbook. I'm sure none of you guys have seen this window before unless you have Full Circle Budget installed on your machine, but this window is a prompt from Full Circle Budget that says, wait a minute, the workbook you just opened has sheets in it that match definitions for budgeting, okay? And it gives me the option to deselect or individually select which sheets I want to format, or I can simply close and not format those. I'm going to walk you through this workbook again. Individual sheets, one for each project, let's say, unformatted. I'm going to go back to full circle budget and I'm going to process as if I reopened this itself. I'm going to process this workbook. I'm going to format three sheets for you real quick. So as I hit retrieve, you'll see full circle budget on the left hand side is given, or right hand side is giving me an orientation of what it's doing to the workbooks. It's working through these worksheets and formatting the data. Depending on how many accounts and how much data is there, will take will dictate how much time it takes. So you'll see here I formatted three sheets of data so far. So I went from this, a plain Excel file with grid lines, no formatting, to this, where I actually hid the grid lines, got rid of the row and column headers, and made it look more like a report. So it doesn't look like an Excel worksheet. That doesn't mean you have to do it that way you can easily come back into this spreadsheet and show the grid lines and the row and column headers. But sometimes people like to see it like a report versus it being a grid. So data highlighted here for my projection and budget with comments. You notice before when I opened this workbook, there were no comments in here, just like it has here. The comments were retrieved from full circle budget when I opened this workbook up. I can only enter in these fields here that I've highlighted. If I try and type in the previous columns of data or delete any data, I get an error message. That's because Full Circle Budget protected this worksheet and locked it down. Again, it only allows me to type in the areas designated for my projection and budget entry, including updating comments, etc. So I can go in here and enter data in any of this, any of the sheets that have been worked on here. And when I'm ready, I can simply save. I can save with Full Circle Budget in three different manners. I can right click Full Circle Budget, save. I can also just click Save in Excel. And this button, this box here can be turned off and automatically force you to save. This case, I'm going to say no because I'm going to not going to write back these changes. The other option is to go to Full Circle Budget and click the Process Workbook button because this gives me more control over which sheets of data I want to save. Since I only entered data on two sheets, there's no sense in me having it processed five, six, ten sheets if that's what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and here click Save. What Full Circle Budget's going to do is evaluate the data on these two sheets, and it automatically updated that information. 13 messages got updated directly to GP. So all that information, as I click on these lines below, you'll notice it's highlighting the number up above. That's what got changed and saved to Full Circle Budget. So again, if I come back here, I don't like that number. I want to change that one. I hit Process Workbook, Save. I actually hit retrieve, not save. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and it processes those three messages right back to GP. So all that information, very simple, easy to use for the end user. They just open the workbook you've presented to them. They enter their data. They save. It gets pushed back. I'll come back to some of the other features and the audit trail tracking, things like that, but I want to jump to my secondary demo sheet, which is a budget template that is what we call a rolling forecast. Again, very common request for most organizations. Hey, can your system do a rolling forecast? We want to pull actual data 
through a year to date time and then have the, us enter a forecast for the remaining part of the year. Same reporting tree. I'm going to go ahead and download this to Excel. Save over the top of the existing template. And I'm going to go ahead and open it. Clicking the Enable Editing button. Based on the previous example, you would have expected that little window to pop up to retrieve the formats. In Full Circle Budget, we actually control whether or not those windows pop up. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit here to the definition window. So if I go to my definition that's highlighted here, this on workbook open option says never retrieve. On the previous workbook, it said ask to retrieve. So you can control what happens when a user opens the workbook and also when a change is detected. Do I prompt the user? Yes or no, default automatically. And this is some of the controls you have with the workbooks. So before I retrieve this workbook or format it, I want to walk you through it a little bit. Remember, actual data for the first six months, budget or forecast data for the remaining six months, then a total. So column O is a total. Well, exporting this from MR is not going to do me much good if I only have a value in there and I actually type a new number here. It's not going to add up. Full circle budget, once I process, you'll see it's actually going to insert a column or a formula here. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. It's also going to format the actual data, but it's going to lock it down so I can't change it. It's going to be read only. So if I come back to my definition, and again, jumping ahead a little, if I go to my field section here, if I look at section O, which is where this column O is, in section O, my formula setting says, insert a sum formula C through N. Okay, so that's where that's gonna put a formula there. My section C, this one says, if row eight says actual, mark it read only. So if I scroll down here, you'll notice here's row eight in my spreadsheet. So if it says actual market read only, if it says forecast, color code it like this. So again, real quick overview of that. So now when I go ahead and process workbook, I'll go ahead and do two sheets, retrieve. You'll see full circle budget is gonna format this workbook, retrieve my comments. So again, comments, formula, Actual is read only. I can only type changes in these months here. So if I scroll to my first page, again, actual data, I can't delete any numbers that are actual because they're read only, but I can type in here and I can copy and paste across the page. I can copy down whatever it is I want to do. And again, these numbers, since they're formulas, are giving me an indication of my total forecast new comments, again, whatever it is. When I'm ready, process workbook, save, full circle takes the data that's in the workbook, saves it back to my database, updates the information automatically. I don't like that number, I want 5,600, and I'll actually wanna equals that times 1.1, and then copy that formula across. Now I wanna copy that formula all the way down. So I'm using formulas in here as well. So now again, process, save. Again, very simple, make the changes, save. The data gets written back almost immediately to Dynamics GPs. So you've got all that information readily available in GP. Audit trail, I talked a little bit about that before. As an admin user, you have access to the audit trail underneath this button log viewer. So when I click the log viewer, it pops up and it displays the entries for the current day. So, so far I've only got 249 entries in my audit log. I can look at the data in this workbook here. I can filter out by different types of data. Maybe I want to look at error messages only. I can see that I had an error here on this workbook. Okay. I can also take all that data and export it to Excel real quick. And in here, again, I'll walk you through what's saved in the audit trail, the date and time, who the user is, 
the action, again, that's the save, error, bypass, what workbook was used, what worksheet, the account, the budget ID, period, before and after amounts, the comments, so new comments as well as the old comments. So we're tracking all the information you would want to know that's happening in the database. What's happened into the budget data? Where did it come from? Who entered it? When did it get saved? All that happens in the audit trail. So again, that's just one day's worth of information in the audit trail, 249 entries. Unless you clear this out, it's gonna be there forever. So I can go to two weeks, I got 2,100 entries. I can go back three months, I've got 5,900 entries. I can even go back a year and I've got 34,000 entries in my audit trail. Okay, it's, this goes back to July of 2017 in here currently. Okay, so all the information I want. Maybe I only want to look at a particular budget ID called, let's say, BUD 2026. So that filters all that information down 34,000 rows to 77. So now I've filtered out all the information for that particular budget ID, and I can take that and export it to Excel. And I can see date and time it was impacted. So it starts out in March of 2018. May of 2018, June of 2018. So here's the ins and outs, ins and outs for that particular budget ID, all right there at my fingertips. Another feature I mentioned in the audit trail was what we called workbook tracking. So imagine if you will, you start your budget process, you're two, three weeks in, maybe even a month. Somebody comes to you and says, somebody changed all the budget numbers in my template. I didn't do it. I need them fixed. I need the original copy from when I entered the data on May 1st. So with full circle budget, you can come in here and filter out the data. So let's just say I'm going back six months. I can find the person's entry in here. I'm not gonna find an exact entry from May, but I'm gonna go find an entry in the audit trail. I'll go back a year even so I can get something. I'm finding the, the workbook that I'm looking for by looking through the log, I find it here. I hit open workbook and full circle budget is going to go open a copy of the workbook from that point in time. Okay, pretty cool. So again, I'm just going to go close that, come back to my log. I go find a workbook any point in time during the process, even if it had error messages, if the tracking was on, tracking was off during part of my budget process here. Find this, click open workbook, and again, full circle budget opens a copy of the file used during that process at that point in time. So again, you've got point in time recovery of each workbook during that process. Okay, so I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to head back over to my main demo template, and I'm going to walk you through a couple scenarios here where we look at some of the definitions. So in this particular setup, I've got my account numbers here, my budget ID is here, my comments. So if I go to my definition window in full circle, and by the way, these definitions are fairly easily set up. They usually take anywhere from 15 minutes to let's say an hour tops to get them set up, depends on how complex the setup is and the format. So what am I doing here? I'm basically creating what they call a worksheet pattern. So I have to create something unique in this cell to tell me which worksheet is what relates to this. So since F1 equals that, I get the green light. If F1 didn't equal that, I'd have a red light. So this format would not match full circle budget. But since it does match, I get a green light. I can tell the system where to start processing, what the sheet password will be, how to color code the data, I can also come back here to the field section and color code here individually. So you might have, and I'll show you in a little bit, a budget definition where you've got multiple sections that are gonna be different colors for each section, like I showed you on the forecast. So anyways, looking at this setup, the account number, how do I tell full circle budget that segment one is here, segment two is here, and segment three is there? So in here and in any of this setup, I can, use Excel formulas to point to the cells in my Excel workbook to get that data. 
So this particular setup says if A is blank, make it blank. Otherwise, put together A5 plus A plus A6. So when I click in this column here, you'll notice that it automatically put together my account code for me. And as I go down the page, Full Circle Budget is recognizing the account number that I'm trying to point to. And when I get to a row where there is no account number in A, it's blank. So it's that simple. So I create a formula that links the cells together and I'm good to go. So what budget ID am I gonna work with? Well, I'm pointing to cell F9. So cell F9 says, save this to budget one. What year is am I saving to? I'm gonna hard code 2024 in here. Okay, I can point to a cell on the, on the spreadsheet or I can just hard code a, a number in here. Same with the period. Budget amount is in column F. And you'll notice here I have four different comment fields. So I'm not re restricted to just one comment field per amount. I give four currently. And you've noticed the formula bars and some of the other options. But once I map up these items, I'm good to save. So I can enter some budget data on this spreadsheet. I can skip over here, which that one looks the same. And when I'm done, process workbook, check the two sheets I saved, hit save. Data gets updated to GP. However, this one I actually have errors on. Remember I mentioned I would highlight some of the error messages that you'd get. So duplicate entry. So full circle budget looks for duplicate account numbers per worksheet. It's gonna save the first line, skip all the other duplicates on the spreadsheet. So sometimes you have to get a little tricky with your formula in your definition if you're gonna have the same account number but use different variables of it in the setup. Account doesn't exist. Since you guys are all GP users, you know that you have to create that fully qualified account from all these segments. Well, full circle budget will look in GP to see if that account number exists. If it doesn't, it'll tell you, it'll give you an error message, okay? In your definition setup, again, controlled by the budget manager, you have the ability to auto create the accounts in GP if you want by checking this box. So again, this will automatically, when I save, create any new account numbers that are not in GP with some business logic and rules, of course. Uh, each of the segments have to be in GP already, and this main account segment, the natural number, has to already be used in some other account code. Okay, so moving on, I'm gonna look at a monthly template. So one of the big differences I wanna highlight here for you is the period, you'll notice I only have January, February, March, April going across the page. Okay, I don't have period one, two, three, four. Okay, well, how does full circle budget know to store January to period one, February to period two? We can do that with another Excel formula. So I open up my template, and if I go to my fields tab and click on period, you'll notice here, I have a formula called month date value. And it's looking at row nine, okay? So if I click in April, it converts the word April to period four, May to five, June to six, etc. Now, for those of you that are a fiscal year basis, you might have to have two different definitions, but you can get a formula in here that just says, okay, I wanna take that number plus three. So maybe June is actually period nine of your fiscal year, July is period 10, August period 11, et cetera. So you can get a little fancier with your formula definitions if you need to. So again, I've just mapped out my period here, enter data, process and save, full circle budget saved all that data. Again, that fast, everything is being updated directly to GP. Multiple budgets. We've we looked at this a little bit in my rolling forecast, but let's just say you've got a projection, three budget years all at the same time. I'm gonna enter this budget data here. Imagine taking this data and importing 
my projection first, and then budget 2025, budget 2026, budget 2027, importing those. That would take you a couple hours at least just to pull the data out of different spreadsheets, format it, import it, full circle budget, save, automatically pushes back to GP under each of those respective budget IDs. So again, looking at the audit trail, you'll notice here, I'm staving 2024, bud 2025, 2026, 27, proj, bud, 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 proj. So again, control the budget data being saved, automatically update it, fast, simple. Okay. I'm gonna go into the definition one for this one a little bit to go through a couple options here. So multiple budgets again fields. I'm going to collapse the definitions. You'll notice I have two different sections here. Okay, section E, and these sections are numbered based on the column they start in automatically, and section G. So the difference between section E and section G is section E has a comment column, whereas section G does not have a comment column. So I, if there's a difference in your setup, you need to have different sections here. There's no limit to the number of sections you can have in your report. The only difference between these sections when I go to set them up, when I look at this, is I'm going to have a comment defined, column F, and I've checked off budget comments. And if I go to section G, there's no budget comments. Sec check oh, actually, there is. I'm going to see where this is mapped. This is actually mapped to section g the excel comment feature so we'll store budget comments from the excel comment feature or from a separate column somebody changed my definition setup on me but the other variable in this definition is this is one budget with a separate column these are three different budget ids so in my budget id what am i looking at i'm looking at row seven so when when it looks at row seven, which is right here, we're going to repeat this three times. So it's going to start with 2025, 2026, 2027, and so forth. So again, if I change my budget data, this number changes. And when I save, it updates the budget data for each of those budget IDs based on my definition setups. I didn't get to save the comment feature. So let me actually insert a comment here testing so we're going to store that comment i actually want to save that and you'll notice i only got one change here okay because it only saved that one comment feature so now if i delete that comment and go back and process but retrieve not save retrieve retrieve is going to bring back the comments so you notice there's the testing comment that it just saved before and it brought it back into my spreadsheet automatically. I didn't have to do anything. Okay. So a little bit of a backtrack. I've walked you through taking management reporter reports, exporting those to Excel, opening them up, having full circle budget automatically format them, walked you through saving budget data, how that's tracked in the audit trail, how to open workbooks, We've looked a little bit at definitions, how you'd configure these definitions. And again, that's part of the setup process, the services on the front end. And for the most part, once your budget is set up, as long as you're not changing very many things from year to year, you can use the same templates and work forward. A couple other things that we um, didn't walk through is connections. So depending on how many companies you have in GP, you'll have a connection per company. So this connection here called demo is pointed to this SQL server and this database, and I'm connecting to it this way. It's using GP as my accounting system, version 2018, and you'll notice that it has this revenue account test. The revenue account test, for those who uh, are familiar with the amounts in GP, revenue is stored as a credit. So that allows me to enter positive numbers in Excel, but store them 
in GP as a proper credit balance in my system. So I just use an Excel formula to determine where in the account number is the differentiator for revenue accounts. Okay, real straightforward. So if I come back to this, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of another feature here. So if I'm looking at this particular entry, okay, and I use another feature called budget maintenance, I'm going to check my connection, sample company two, budget maintenance, sample company two. And if I look for this account number here, 4740, it's going to start highlighting in groups of 10 how many account numbers match. So 00, 47, 40, 00, 00. If I open up that account and I switch to this budget ID, Proj 2024, you'll notice that in period six, the amount of 20 million 250 is a negative because full circle budget automatically flipped the sign of those revenue accounts and stored that in GP as a credit. I can make changes to these amounts right here, and I can also change the comments and store data from here. So I could actually enter this as my, oops. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong key on my keyboard and locked everything out. Hopefully you guys can see my screen okay. Um, I'm making these changes here. And I'm gonna hit save. And as I save that, even though I'm not in Excel, full circle budget track that in the log. So you'll see here this row, workbook, worksheet, nothing. That means it came from the budget maintenance window for that account. This budget ID, I changed it to 3 million from 20 million there's the new comment feature all that information gets pushed right back to full circle budget and into your dynamics gp company directly so if i go to look this same amount up with the budget maintenance window you'll see that proj 2024 there's the 3 million new comments that information is in GP right away, just like saving it from these Excel workbooks, okay? A couple other questions and features people come up with is how do I disable or lock budgets? So we have a lock budget feature, which is more, no more than really putting a password. So I identify which work, uh, which definition I wanna lock. So let me confirm which one I'm in here. So if I'm on this particular definition, called GP multi two. I'm gonna go ahead and lock GP multi two. And I put in a password. And you'll notice now it shows up up top here. So if I were to open a workbook with this definition in it and go to save, I'm gonna get prompted with a password. So I need to know the password in order to enter the data or save the data. So now that I've entered the proper password, full circle budget can process that. Another option is to come to the definition and turn off budgeting completely by marking this definition as inactive. So you'll notice now when I come to my definition window, I no longer see GP multi two active or when I hit process workbook, You'll notice now I'm missing my GP multiple worksheet. And that's only because I've disabled this definition. So those are two options you can use to disable in budgeting. Another feature too, I mentioned processing workbooks in batch mode. So process batch. This basically allows the budget admin to point to a folder on the network and it'll browse to it and identify all the spreadsheets in that format. You can check or uncheck any ones you don't wanna use, and then I can either retrieve or save. Retrieve on the front end to format the workbooks, save on the back end to save the data. So again, it's nothing more than pointing to a folder on the network 
and letting Full Circle identify all the workbooks in that folder. Okay. I've got one more feature. Um, again, this is available in the enterprise level of Full Circle budget called detail line budgeting. So in this particular sheet, you'll notice here I've highlighted line items. And these are just simple numbers, line one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. They show up underneath each account code. So underneath my account, I can enter different comments or details with budget transactions. Okay, full circle budget is set up the same way. I have a com connection here. I have fields. The only new field in here is called line item number. This budget data is stored to the same GP company. All these detail lines are stored in a separate full circle budget table, but the budget roll up amount is stored in GP. So I can process and save the same way. All that data gets stored. If I go to my log viewer, you'll notice my account numbers here have the line item numbers appended to them. So that's the only difference. Full circle budget allows you to track detail lines outside the account code with this system. All right, so we are closing in on about 10 minutes left uh, on the hour. I'm just gonna pause for a few minutes, open up the lines here with the moderators. And all right, do we have any questions, Caroline or Sabrina? Um, Matt, I don't see any questions coming through quite yet, but if anybody has one, feel free. You can unmute yourself and ask, or else ask it in the question window. Um, here is one that I, I do have. Can you review what types of data is tracked in the audit trail? Certainly. So let's go back here to the audit trail. Um, the information here, as you can see on this screen, is somewhat limited to what's tracked. So I'm just gonna go ahead and export that to Excel. Um, walking through this in detail fashion again, uh, these are the header rows. So date and time, the user, the action, which again, which is gonna be either a bypass error or save. For those who didn't catch it early on, the bypass means I saved the Excel workbook, but I did not store the data to GP. Uh, what workbook and worksheet the data came from, the account number, the budget ID, the year, the period, all the amount information you're looking for, the comments and scrolling across, the message. The message again tells you what was updated, duplicate entry for any error messages, things like that. And then also those additional fields that are in the definition window like unit quantity, amount, approval numbers, approver users, et cetera. So these are all miscellaneous fields that are stored and they're, they're only tracked if there's data in those mapped up. Okay. Anything else on that one or any other questions? I will just spend maybe a couple more minutes here real quick, just doing a quick review of everything and then we'll come back and see if there's any questions. I like to use this sheet here too, again, just to refresh pricing. So we're probably talking uh, on the basic version, which again covers three users. It's $2,000 plus the maintenance. Basic services are probably $1,000. Uh, enterprise license is 4,800 with the 20% maintenance. Uh, the services are gonna be about 1,500. They're usually a little more to map up the, the enterprise, especially if you're doing detail lines. Um, you have the capability with full circle budget again to take management reporter reports, export it to Excel, have the system automatically format them, and as you enter data and save, automatically push that data right back to GP so you no longer have to worry about creating your imports and copy paste and try and reconcile. Uh, setup is real basic and simple. Uh, after the install, you're creating a connection to a company, and then from there, you're creating a definition for this setup. So the definition, so for instance, this definition from the management reporter output, um, I'm mapping up two sections here, section F, my account code, basically is looking at the length of column A. If it equals four digits, then it's taking A6 plus A and adding zero, zero to the end of it automatically. Budget ID, year, period, amount. 
So I'm just mapping up those simple fields. All the rest of the fields are extra. I don't have to touch them. And then in my section G, same thing, length of the account, the budget ID, period, year, amount. You just need to map up five fields, figure out what colors you want. Here's another thing I guess I should have highlighted. Virtually limitless color combination so I can switch to Alice blue font and maybe I want to go to something. Let's go with our sea green background color. Uh, as simple as saving, process workbook, retrieve. Full circle will automatically reformat the workbook with different colors. We've seen a couple customers use these color combinations for their budget process from the start. For the first week or two, it's one color. And then when they have uh, two weeks left, they change it to another color. So it automatically alerts the users to the, the stage of the budget cycle they're in uh, by simply reformatting the workbooks. Um, we have the ability to process in batch mode. We have the ability to lock budgets down. Um, real straightforward, simple, easy to configure, but powerful system. And if you like using Excel for your budget process and you want to help automate and streamline some of that, reach out to our friends at DFC and get a deeper dive on full circle budget.